This is Akash Mani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on research, development and innovation to accelerate adoption of green hydrogen and fuel cell technology in the country. The participants are Yashasvi Turlapati, Energy Analyst and Lalima Aneja Dang, Anchor. The 41st Steering Committee Meeting of International Partnership for Hydrogen and Fuel Cells in the Economy, IPHE, is being hosted by India in New Delhi from the 18th to the 22nd of March. Of course, the idea would be to decarbonize the economy and uh, the need for collaborative action on this. We have Austria, Chile, France, European Commission, Japan, Germany, Netherlands, UAE, UK, US, Singapore and South Korea taking part in this international meeting. Well, more on that later. For now, we are now joined by Mr. Yashasvi Turlapati, our energy analyst for now. Welcome, Mr. Turlapati. Thank you very much, uh, Lalima. So, uh, when we talk of uh, hydrogen, we know that there has been a national green hydrogen mission which was approved by the Union Cabinet on the 4th of January 2023. What is the aim of this? Because we have other renewable means of energy as well. There is solar energy, there is wind energy. What was the need for this green hydrogen and what exactly is green hydrogen? Firstly, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Green hydrogen, I would start with the initial part of your question regarding the renewable sources that we have and what is green hydrogen in the second part. The renewable sources that we have, as you just stated, uh, solar, wind, etc. These are used to produce electricity. We cannot use electricity for our energy needs in all aspects of our life. We need a fuel in as a replacement because the amount of energy that we get from a fuel, for example, a car that is running on a petrol or a lorry that is running on a diesel or some other thing is cannot be run easily by replacing it with electricity because it either needs essential elements or rare elements that are to be extracted, which also creates a lot of pollution. So we cannot directly go into the electrification part of it. green hydrogen coming back to that. So therefore, we need a fuel for that. So hydrogen. Green hydrogen, hydrogen can be produced in different aspects in different ways for replacing the fossil fuels. If you are using methane, a methane, the chemical formula of methane is CH4. Mm -hmm. C stands for carbon, H stands for hydrogen, and there is one molecule of uh, carbon and four molecules of hydrogen. There is something called steam methane reforming reaction, SMR reaction, wherein we separate the carbon from hydrogen, wherein we pass the methane in, into the steam, and in this reaction, in the presence of a catalyst, carbon separates and hydrogen separates. Mm -hmm. This hydrogen is collected. This carbon can be stored or done something about the carbon. This way of producing hydrogen using fossil fuels is called gray hydrogen. Gray, why is it gray? Because it is also producing carbon dioxide, which is a global warming gas. There are six global warming gases, out of which carbon dioxide is one of them. So the hydrogen that is produced in that way is called gray hydrogen. If there is another process called carbon storage, wherein this produced carbon can be stored somewhere and not emitted into the atmosphere, that type of produced hydrogen is called as blue hydrogen, wherein we are, although producing carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases, we are not releasing them into the atmosphere. Green hydrogen is the sustainable way of producing hydrogen wherein we use water, a little bit brine uh, kind of water, brine in the sense where there is a little bit mixture of salt and we put electrodes in it, pass current to the electrodes and separate hydrogen from oxygen because water's formula is H2O, we separate that H2 to produce hydrogen using electricity. If you are using renewable electricity like solar or wind or any other renewable sources of energy, the produced hydrogen is called green hydrogen because we are not emitting any carbon dioxide or any other greenhouse gas gases. So when we talk about uh, hydrogen fuel cell, there was one bus which was uh, tried successfully in Pune, which ran through the energy created by hydrogen fuel. And currently yes. we have about 3,500 buses being run globally on hydrogen fuel. China seems to have an edge over other countries. Majorly these buses are being run uh, in China. What is the scope of green hydrogen as a fuel in our country, India, and where do we stand? Currently, we stand, we are in process of development in that stage because our major source of energy currently is coming from coal. Energy here is translating to electricity, is coming from coal. We are in a process of generating more and more energy through renewable sources, that is solar, and uh, we all know how much uh, investment has gone into 
the solar power lands and uh, after in the past 10 years uh, there is an exponential increase in uh, capacity installation capacity of solar power but hydrogen as i was saying is a requirement as a fuel as an alternative fuel so we are in stage of development mm -hmm. as reading previously there is about 19000 crores or 19700 crores investment happening for the production and storage of green hydrogen in india mnre the ministry of uh, new and renewable energy sources is doing that so we are in that stage of development. As rightly stated by you, there are buses run on hydrogen. Currently, I'm based in Delhi. I see a few buses running on hydrogen in Delhi. And you rightly said that there was an initial bus that had run in uh, Pune as well. Even our uh, transportation minister, Mr. Uh, Nitin Gadkari, he also promised that he would make hydrogen a national fuel uh, shortly, as soon as possible for India. Also, the grow into the market or go high into this market takes time but we are going in the right direction clearly our aim is long term that is to switch to green hydrogen fuel by 2030 and of course this will reduce the fossil fuel import build currently we are spending much of our finances on importing 80 percent of our fuel which we have to import from outside what are the advantages of green hydrogen vis-a-vis -vis petrol or diesel do we need to have a different engine for that or can we run a hybrid bus or a hybrid vehicle with both options of a green hydrogen as well as petrol and diesel what would you say on that you have rightly stated about the import of crude oil in, uh, in general we are approximately importing 75 to 80 percent of our uh, energy imports but uh, we are helpless in that situation because we are uh, you have rightly stated regarding the energy imports that we are uh, that we are doing but we are unfortunate in that aspect because we in india do not have that much reserves with respect to vis-a-vis -vis our energy consumption. Mm -hmm. So we are helpless in that aspect. So we have to import uh, fossil fuels from other countries like uh, Middle East or any other parts of America or some other countries, Russia. The second part of your question was like whether fuel cell can be a hybrid, uh, how is fuel cell work and a hybrid model is possible or not. Mm -hmm. Fuel cell uh, does not work in a conventional manner like the other petrol or diesel cars. Fuel cell basically is similar to a battery where there is an anode and a cathode. The hydrogen gas is not combusted in that uh, car. If at all a car or a vehicle is running on fuel cell, it is actually running on elect electricity. It's an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Why is it an electric vehicle? Because the fuel cell takes this hydrogen and generates electricity in the car itself and mm -hmm. that electricity is used to move the vehicle therefore that uh, since it is hydrogen based and the electricity can be generated in huge amounts it can be used for uh, running a car as well as a bus as that's why hydrogen can be a, a fuel that can replace uh, petrol or diesel i see so we can replace electric vehicles with hydrogen uh, based vehicles right what are the limitations i mean every uh, fuel that we take you know we in, in the last few years if we go for electricity we know that it can't be charged a vehicle has to be on charge for quite a long time to make it compatible for traveling every mode of fossil fuel or otherwise some will have emissions some as i said about electricity it needs to be charged for a little longer time what are the disadvantages of using hydrogen fuel fuel cell based vehicle the limitations with respect to a vehicle is uh, currently the limitations is we, we do not have the hydrogen storage hubs the hydrogen uh, there is something called uh, energy density the energy density of hydrogen is low so therefore we need larger volumes of hydrogen for us uh, to store it because of which uh, we need storage hubs which the current government is trying to build those storage hubs that, as i was saying previously that is with respect to hydrogen as a fuel if we talk about any fuel for that matter there are limitations whether it comes to you know whether it is electricity or whether we come to petrol or diesel fossil fuels what are the limitations of using hydrogen cell as a fuel first part of the answer would be the cost because currently the cost of hydrogen uh, using hydrogen as a fuel and using it in a fuel cell is uh, pretty high in comparison to the conventional fuels that we are using secondly the storage aspect as i have already told thirdly actually the main uh, one of the main reason is uh, hydrogen is not boomed up is production of hydrogen itself is a little bit con not clear in, in itself because we need renewable energy to produce green hydrogen and uh, we need large amount of plants uh, which government is trying to do to produce green hydrogen as i remember if my memory is serving me right by 2030 we want to be the hub of green hydrogen we in the sense india india wants to be the hub of green hydrogen so if we want to be that we need huge amounts of renewable energy sources as renewable energy sources are not a continuous production sources because there might be cloudy a day 
such that solar energy is not producing mm-hmm. or the wind pans uh, have a problem of uh, if you put them in a seashore or somewhere in an inland area where there are birds or migratory birds these wind pans uh, hit these migratory birds which is an environmental and uh, ecological concern so such type of concerns are there with respect to renewable power mm-hmm. as well as water main production of hydrogen is done using water water is in itself in india is getting scarce by the day because of the increasing population and mm-hmm. for hydrogen production we we cannot use direct sea water we need a little bit salty water not complete fresh water so you need a mix of maybe not fresh water and sea water as it is we have water scarcity and how can you use it for hydrogen production may be a major question so for that but there however there is major research happening in iit madras and other universities like sanford university etc where salt water can directly be used to produce hydrogen so this are a tun- light at the end of the tunnel where there is scope to for us to use it but we need to work hard to get there so the research and development process especially as we are developing indigenous capabilities for green uh, hydrogen fuel it's a work under progress one can say right yes yes do we have some uh, public sector undertakings involved i believe gale is involved in green fuel cell production green hydrogen production yes great gale is involved in it and um i'm assuming definitely the steel authority is trying to get into it because production of uh, hydrogen maybe steel can be produced using hydrogen so they want to get into it and you also expect that some jobs will be created the target is to or the assessment is that 6 lakh jobs might be created because of promotion of uh, green fuel as hydrogen definitely see since we are anyhow importing our fuels like fossil fuels from the other countries if we are generating in it in india we generate jobs for creating solar farms we generate jobs for maintaining hydrogen generation plants we definitely will create a lot of jobs in it i may not be sure about the 6 lakh jobs that you are promising but yeah definitely job increase is going to happen we are using hydrogen cell as fuel for rockets is it can it be a success story if we use it for commercial purposes before we move on to as a fuel for personal uh, purposes do you think that there is enough scope for that especially in huge plants like steel cement a lot of these plants are great energy guzzlers already sweden uh, have has uh, plants that are running uh, using hydrogen to produce steel and uh, with respect to rockets that you have mentioned there have actually in 1960s the apollo rockets there were few rockets that were powered using hydrogen but in uh, later uh, 1980s maybe there was an accident that happened a uh, hydrogen balloon has burst up killing about a, about 100 or 150 people after which the hydrogen fuel usage of hydrogen as a fuel has reduced but after that we got to know the advantages of green hydrogen or the you know the effects of greenhouse gases or global warming is so high that we definitely have to shift to alternative fuels the necessity is so high that we definitely have to hydrogen fuels no other chance what do you say no other option other than going to that is what is making us go to that India as i mentioned at the beginning of the program has national green hydrogen mission and it was approved by the union cabinet uh, in jan 2023 where do you see this vision taking our country as a developed nation for 2047 do you think that there is a lot of scope for uh, the usage of this kind of fuel and uh, we, we what is the long term and medium term vision regarding this fuel in our country if you look at the gdp per capita of india it's very low in comparison to the uh, developed countries mainly because we were we just got independence 75 76 years before however one of the other primary reason that we have or the third primary the second one is obviously population is high the third primary reason is because we are importing our energy that is we are not blessed with fossil fuels or crude oil in our uh, country the or the reserves that we have is low or cannot meet our requirements so if we assume for a minute that if we are not importing or zero import of crude oil is happening our bill in, in any normal middle class economy if you look at if your substantial amount of your bill is zero right now so you are not paying any bill to anyone so you can the scope of you going as a developed country is very high if you do that so that is why we have to concentrate on hydrogen and we are definitely going to be a hub in that as we can see a future in it thank you yes sir bijip Thank you very much. You were listening to a discussion on research, development and innovation to accelerate adoption of green hydrogen and fuel cell technology in the country. The participants were Yashasvi Turlapati, energy analyst and Lalima Anija Dang, anchor.
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 928-909-4044.